our next guest is best known for playing the glamorous Bernice Blackwood for over 20 years in the Yorkshire Dales. But away from the hallowed set of Emmerdale, actress Samantha Giles has been conjuring up successes all of her own as she has put pen to paper to publish her first children's book. And she's here now to tell us all about it and how her own witchy ways uh, inspired it. Hi there, Samantha. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, lovely to see Hi. you. So, tell us a bit more about this book, then. This is something that you've you've wanting to you've wanted to do for a while, isn't it? Yeah, it is actually. And I um I thought of writing it in 2017, and so three years ago, and it took me nine months to write. So it's like having a baby, I suppose. I was writing while I was doing Emma Dale still, and then of course once I'd finished it. It was the, uh, such a long process of finding a literary agent. And then once I found a literary agent, finding someone that wanted to publish it. And as you can imagine, loads and loads of rejections on the way. But I just had to keep really, really positive, you know, in order to get it out there because I really believed in it. Mm. And was it rejections because of who you are so they weren't taking you seriously about it? I don't know, because, you know, it's funny. I, I thought maybe having a little bit of a profile might help, yeah. you know, get people to read it and sort of help me a little bit. But actually, it didn't really seem to make much difference. Um, and I think that it's just the way of publishing. You know, there's so many people out there writing. There's so much to, to, to read, to get through. And, and it's just a really, really tough business, particularly children's writing, mm. which is massive at the moment. Um, so I just kind of had to persevere and I, I was just so, so lucky um, when I got my agent because she was brilliant and she is brilliant and she really believed in the book. Can I just say very quickly that my friend, her children have read the book and they are obsessed with it. They said it's their favourite book. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm having lovely, lovely feedback, so I'm really, really pleased. Picking up on what Colleen says, Samantha, you use your, your daughters as the focus group for... Um, for testing and trialling out your book? Yeah, my young, my eldest one was nine when I started writing it, so I'd give her chapter by chapter to, to sort of read it and let me know what she thought. And she reads everything that I write. She loves... They, they both love reading. <laughs> so she'd sort of... And I think the fact that the, the girls, the two girls in the book... Uh, their sisters and they're based on my children and some of the daft things that we do in our family you know like we've got in the book there's a fridge magnet a Scottish fridge magnet and which we've got at home and anytime anyone presses the magnet it plays Scottish bagpipe music everyone has to stop what they're doing and dance you know do Scottish the Highland <laughs> fling it's just a stupid little thing that we do in our family and I thought it'd be fun to put it in the book because it, it kind of diffuses arguments and, uh, you know, comes at times when, you know, maybe something dramatic's happening and then suddenly somebody presses the fridge magnet so it all stops. Samantha, did your magical abilities help you to, to write this book? Did this have a, a part to play in it at all? Well, I don't know, really. I mean, obviously, the, the, the mother in the book is sort of a little bit like me in that she's an actress and she does um, she does magic spells and things. She's not magical in the sense that, I mean, in the book, they live with four other witches and wizards that um, they can see, but the father can't see these witches and wizards. But the mother can't do magic like disappearing, but she does, you know, makes little spell kits, which is what I actually do as well. Do you really? Um, and, yeah. So, so are you yeah. are you defined as a witch then? Like, how does it how does it work? Well, it, it's funny when you say to somebody that you're a witch they kind of I mean I don't really use that term very often because people just think you're a bit you know balmy but I suppose yeah, I, I would say that, that I follow um, Wicca which is a, a form of paganism really so it's and basically all it is is following the natural cycles of the earth following the moon's phases um, and you can use magic within it as well Boy, um, I can see and you raising I your eyebrows there <laughs> Well, no, it's very interesting, actually, because, um, first of all, I think everything you're doing with the Harry Potter you know, phenomenon over in recent years, I think all children and a lot of people are really interested in this sort of magic and spells. On the other hand, when you talk about having a spell kit, I would imagine other people think you're a bit crazy. I mean, how can you just use a spell kit to get what you want or to ask for something or in Colleen and Brenda's case, just get a man? <laughs> very well, harsh. They won't. It's a bit harsh, Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give her a chance. Gloria! 
<laughs> We're certainly <laughs> part of the show. Right to the point, Gloria. <laughs> well, let's just it's go really, for it, really. It's Come on. It's, it's really similar to um, The Secret, I suppose. You know, yeah. lots of people love about the secret where you can manifest things in your life and how positive thinking creates um, positive things ar around you and that doesn't always happen you know because in life terrible things happen to people and you can't explain things sometimes why they happen and uh, you so know and, an and obviously of, or positive thinking because I've read the secret and it's all about like cosmic ordering isn't it so it's you know you, you, you're writing down exactly what you want and, and almost being grateful for it before it's actually happened. And you did a similar thing with your husband, didn't you? Almost manifested him into your yeah. life. Yeah, I did. I did a, um, <clears throat> I sort of created my own love spell and um, decided that I, I wanted to, you know, I got fed up, I was fed up really with some rubbish boyfriends that I'd had. And I thought, OK, I, you know, I need to decide what I'm really, really looking for. Because I think we all, especially women, have a tendency to go for the ones that probably aren't the ones that are good for us. So I thought, right, I'm going to focus very strongly on what I'm looking for. And then part of doing kind of putting the spell out there is doing a ritual, really, of getting things that symbolise things to you, perhaps using crystals or candles or herbs. And it's. The ritual is part of cementing kind of what you are asking for, what you are hoping to achieve or we've, to manifest in your life. We've got and two it's putting it out. We've got sorry to interrupt you there, Samantha, but we've we've Put got uh, Brenda and Colleen here who are who are listening to your every word because they they'd like to try this out. They're looking to find uh, true love. So we'd love to get your your tips, as you were just saying there, Samantha. Are you guys ready? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Been writing down been, things. Been ready for a while. Honestly. So, <laughs> Samantha, <laughs> tell us a bit more. What do they need to do? Well, the basic premise. I mean, I'm not going to tell you letter by letter because obviously that then I'm not going to, you know, I've sort of given every, all the secrets away really. But basically, you are writing down. Writing down, I think, is a very important part of manifesting what you want in your life because it's it's putting it out there, it's actually making it real and cementing it. So you have to think very carefully, not just physically what you're after, but sort of emotionally and mentally, you know, do you, is it important to you to have the same political views, the same morality? Um, is it important that they're kind, sensitive, you know, well, or do there, you want... So I mean, Brenda's Brenda's nearly filled the book in. <laughs> You've got one word on yours. Brenda's done like five Samantha, pages. Have I got any chance if that's all I want? A pulse. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Come on. That's oh, not that that specific. I'm not Is asking for a work? lot, Samantha. Come on. Is that even a human? And I still can't find anyone. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be more specific, Brenda. You've well, been pretty specific. I started. With yours. I started with funny. He's got to have a sense of humour. Yes. He's got to be self-sufficient. Yes. Loves a cuddle. Beautiful eyes, because that's the window to your soul. Attractive. A great cook, because I love my food. You've got to know how to cook my food on a Sunday. Some nice <laughs> lips would be grateful. That would be lovely. Medium build. Not much. Clean <laughs> fingernails. Got to love cats. Got to be list. over 40. The list am I going on to is that am I going on to Samantha, we're <laughs> gonna be in touch if this spell pays off. Thank you so much. That's <laughs> it for today. Way.